Hey, this is Nick from Lamar Plus Nick, and the Core SWX plate showed up, so I can finally walk around with my Komodo. My setup has expanded. I got my GDU monitor mount, which I like very much, and I attached that to this Ulanzi phone clamp, which is just a cheap one I found on Amazon. So now I'm able to mount the hydrogen, like I was talking about, onto the top of the camera. And at the back, I got my Core SWX V-mount battery plate. I pre-ordered this plate back in August or something when it showed up as a deal in the Red Komodo users Facebook group. I was immediately interested because of how compact it is and it helps that I already own V-mount batteries. Buying this plate was actually the cheapest way for me personally to get the camera up and running. As with the camera, it's just surprising how small it is. I'm just used to everything being on the bulkier side when it comes to cinema cameras. I could buy smaller V-mounts eventually if I feel like that's necessary, but most likely if I'm going to go smaller smaller, I'll just use the BPs when I get them. The plate is made out of metal, the idea here being you can hold heavier batteries and you won't be depending on plastic alone to hold that weight. There have been some issues with this, which I'll talk about in a little bit. There is a USB port and a D-tap for powering accessories, which is great. Also because my batteries have both those ports already, I now have two of each of those. There's also a two-pin Limo port on the bottom, and finally, a micro USB for the plates possible and probably inevitable firmware updates. It's really secure though. I'm not worried about the battery coming off at all. Overall, I really like how it looks. Chorus WX has designed it to blend in really well with the camera body. Definitely appreciate that. Of course, all of this stuff is meant to be utilitarian, but you know, good cosmetic design is always a plus. Mounting the plate to the camera actually takes a bit more strength than you expect, but I think mostly that's because of it being designed to fit pretty snugly. However, this brings us to the issues that some users have been dealing with so far. So Core SWX made a white version for the Stormtrooper Komodo owners. Uh, when those plates showed up, some people were noticing that it is nearly impossible for the plate to be completely seated on the camera. Core SWX immediately responded to that and wants anyone who's having those problems to send the plate back so they can fix or replace it. Apparently this issue came about because of the extra coat of paint that was applied to make the plates white. Uh, it's also a matte white paint, which matches the white camera bodies, but it puts matte paint against matte paint, uh, which makes it have more grip and results in being harder to slide the plate down. That's obviously inconvenient for a lot of people who've already received their plates and have to send them back. But at least they're being responsive and taking care of the issue. So when I first got my plate, I was really hoping that was a Stormtrooper plate problem only. I opened up my plate, tried to get it on the camera, and it was definitely pretty damn tough to get it on there. You have to apply pressure to the plate evenly so it engages properly on both sides of the camera. I know that's obvious, but it comes with a little more difficulty than you think. But I was able to attach the plate and power was passing to the camera, so success. Also, after taking the plate on and off a couple times, it fit a lot better and became easier to do overall. Because it was a little bit tough to get it on in the first place and all the stuff that was online, I decided to reach out to the company on the off chance that something was wrong. They looked at the pictures I sent and assured me that it looks to be within the margin of error, but that if I felt like it was off, they would be cool with me sending it in for them to replace. Ultimately, I decided against it. It's fitting on the camera and working as intended, so no, no real problems. Now, I'm not gonna try to discount anyone else's experiences with these plates. There's no question that it's off to a rough start. Uh, I do think Core SWX has been handling all of it the best they can. Uh, they are replacing or fixing plates, no questions asked pretty much, so that's good. Personally, I like this plate and I'm happy to keep using it. I haven't tried any of the other plates, like the one made by Tilta, for instance. Uh, with that one, you can mount the battery sideways, which is nice as it keeps the, the height of the camera down. However, that plate is at least partially plastic and that may be okay, especially if you have smaller V-mounts. Personally, I feel a little bit more comfortable knowing that the Core SWX plate is made of metal and isn't going anywhere, even if someone bumps it hard or the camera drops or something like that. I have to say though, if you're someone that wants to keep your gear absolutely pristine with no scratches whatsoever, then this probably isn't the plate for you. I think that's a valid concern if that's something you're worried about as the plate is made of metal and so is the back of the camera. 
the paint on the camera will get scratched away a little bit where the mount points touch. There's also going to be a, some inevitable friction when you, like while you're using the camera uh, and, it's gonna, and it's being jostled around so like just regular use. Those metal parts are probably going to rub against each other and remove some of the paint. But in my mind, it's minimal wear and tear and in an area that you aren't really going to see anyways uh, because there's almost always going to be a battery of some kind mounted there. Now, if you're seeing metal shavings when you dismount the plate, I might be a little more concerned. You don't want the actual mount points to wear away and not be able to mount batteries there anymore. I've only seen one person say they've seen metal shavings, so that may be isolated, but you know, just something to be aware of. If something integral to the camera is getting messed up, don't keep messing with it, get the problem fixed. For me, it's only scratched away a little of the paint. That's something that's going to happen at some point anyways, and to be honest, I buy my cameras to use them, so I'm not really that worried about it. But here's your reminder to get some insurance for your camera equipment. You won't be sorry. <laughs> uh, if you want to avoid these issues entirely, I'd, I'd just go for some BP-955s or 975s. They're made of plastic and would most likely be more gentle on the camera than a metal plate. When I did my research before buying, this one ended up being my favorite, but here are some other options for you to check out and the links will be in the description below. This is the Tilta plate. It has two D-taps, two two-pin Limo ports, as well as a USB port, and it comes in two different colors. Like I said, it's partially made of plastic. The plastic is the part that touches the back of the camera. There may be metal supports underneath the plastic. Maybe it's more sturdy than it sounds, but I can't verify that. Then we have the wooden camera plate, which mounts differently than the rest of them. It only takes up one of the BP slots. This could be a great option if you want the ability to hot swap batteries. It has three D-taps. And lastly, there's this Vaxxus plate, which is pretty cool if you have a need for its extra features. It's a V-mount plate that can be mounted vertically or horizontally if you break out the screwdriver, but also it's a powerful video transmitter that advertises 600 foot range, 80 millisecond latency, HDMI out, SDI out, and a USB-C port. And lastly, I just want to say thanks to everyone who responded to the first video. I wasn't really expecting that much of a response, but I got a bunch of good ideas for videos from some of you guys. I'm just glad I can bring some sort of, you know, helpful perspective. Anyways, talk to you in the next one. Later.